Je... Ja... Spare a kindness for a priest of two moons? Hadaras is at the end of his rope, dangling by the scruff. This one returns from warning the Speaker of the Main of a dire prophecy, only to find his fellow priests speaking little sense and doing even less, raving and rambling about our Moon Bishop's visions and growing more demented by the moment. She tells the priests to burn our moon sugar, so they do. She tells them to smear cheese upon the walls, so they do. She tells them to douse the temple fires with their tongues, so they do. I fear someone will die if this continues. Bright moons shine upon you, Walker. This one pursued his friend, Zarga, before you arrived. The fool chases a beast's young with a butterfly net, and woe unto him when their mother follows the commotion. Please, find Zarka before he is eaten. I last saw him run after the beasts into the wilderness to the west. I hoped he would not follow them into their den, but... I would be a fool to believe that now. Since she was very young, her eyes have always been as bright as Joan and Jod. She has never led us astray. It's why she's Moon Bishop. But all this madness... something is not right. She foresaw the return of the dragons with a frightening clarity. I went to warn Lord Garesh Ri on this dire prophecy, so it might reach the main's ears. But I arrived too late. The dragons had already come. Two moons at Tenmar is Hadaras's temple. A venerable house of Joan and Jod, a place of worship and wisdom, reduced to a den of fools chasing our moon bishop's fevered dreams. They don't question our visions. No matter how absurd the task, they leap at it with zeal. When I asked why they would do such things, they look at me as if I am the one who is crazy. A powerful and insidious spell to turn the whole temple on its head. But at least a spell may be broken. It's a small comfort to hope that their minds may not be truly lost. That is flat as a flapjack! But who said you could play with my toys? Well, hello, my new playmate! Glad to find someone with their wits still about them. Too many crazies around here. I mean, what self-respecting person goes around chasing butterflies with a net? Everybody knows you use a hammer. I'm a cat. I thought that bit was obvious. Unless I'm not a cat. Meow? Meow. Nope, cat. 
Maybe you're not as sharp as I thought. A tack that's seen one too many backsides, eh? <laughs> Bad for you, worse for them! <laughs> the priest, silly! You really are clueless, aren't you, plaything? How are you gonna win the game if you can't even find the pieces? Am I gonna have to dangle every answer in front of you like cheese-stuffed mice hanging by their entrails? Ah, that's more like it. Maybe there's hope for you after all. Now hurry your heroic hiney to my playground, or it's gonna be the blind leading the blind out there. Ha <laughs> ha! Toodles! Oh no, stop this madness. Why can't you see reason? Seeing is the problem, Adoras. That's why we need it. Maybe we don't need it. This one's claws are sharp. Pop! Pop! And we're all saved! No, it uh, must be the fork. It won't work otherwise. Ah, Jal, you are safe. I hope the same may be said about Sarka. Moons, I pray he does not get any other ideas. Hadaras has his hands full as it is. He found these ones searching for a fork to put out their eyes. The Moon Bishop told them that if they blind themselves, they would remain hidden from the dragon's sight. Ah, <sighs> not just any fork. A two-tined iron fork smelling ever so slightly of roast beef. Please, help me keep them from finding this smelly thing. This one smells meat wafting on the wind. It is not an odor he would call beefy, but he thinks it may be the trail they were following. Hadaras will keep his eyes on these ones, so they may keep their eyes. Because they are insane. Only a sugar tooth would believe putting out their own eyes would blind a dragon. And even they would have the sense not to do it unless it got them more skooma. I count my blessings that not just any fork will do. Then this one is sure you will have no trouble finding it. Return when you have found it and perhaps we may convince these ones to give up and return to the temple. You did? What did he... Wait, why didn't you stop him? Dark moons... What sort of childish sorcerer drives clergy to chase after wild beasts and put out their eyes? We must stop this sick puppeteer. But this one can't just leave these fools to their own devices. Find the fork, then we'll give chase. The 
this one must talk in circles with lunatics much longer, he too will go mad. Did you find any offending forks at the campground? <sighs> Gajit gets all goose pimply in the hackles just touching it. Adoras fears things are even worse than he imagined. This fork reeks of more than beef. It stinks of oblivion. The skooma cat? He must be responsible for our moon bishop's strange visions. But how has he spread his madness to the monks? And you said you saw him, in the flesh. An Alphic? The skooma cat should not be able to cross the lunar lattice. If he walks among us, then Joan and Jode must truly be out of alignment. We must check on the temple. Please, you go ahead to the temple. Find our moon bishop. Keep her from spreading any more of this madness. Hadoras will meet you there, once he leads these ones to safety without them straying toward any other foolishness. Before there were the moons, or the world, there were Anur and Fadomai. From their union, all the god cats came, including the one Khajiit known as Shegarath, the crook-tailed cat who shares his madness with sugar tooths through skooma. Hadoras does not smell the sick sweetness of the drug upon them. Terrible as it is, the fleeting skooma dreams would be preferable to this all-consuming madness. On this side of the lattice, it seems Shegarath needs no sugar to share his lunacy. The lunar lattice formed by Jon and Jode's light separates Nerni from the other god cats and protects her children from the ones who would do us harm. Normally, Shegarath could only send his mad thoughts across through the perverted moon sugar. This one isn't sure. The mere touch of it makes him want to spit fur, but he must keep it out of the hands of others. Perhaps he will bury it under the squatting sands where it belongs. It is the least that this one can do to keep his kin from teetering off the edge of insanity. Hadaras will be all right. No amount of lingering beef stink will lure this one into putting it into his mouth. Or anywhere else, for that matter. Oh, my ears are burning hotter than Dagon's backside! Come on, give him a scratch, would you? I see you met Forky. Been talking about me again, hasn't it? Such a gossip, that one. But you can hear the option if you stick it in your ears. Give it a try! Doing what? The purring? I don't know. Just happens at the darndest times. Smelling a bowl of cream, laying eyes on a plump ball of yarn, licking me... Oh, wait. I feel a grooming coming on. Who's trying? Oh, sure, you've kept a handful of boring and breathing. But we've been having a right riot in the temple. You ever hear cats always land on their feet? Turns out, it's true. Of course, their feet wind up by their ears, but why split pairs, eh? <laughs> Stop! Stop! We're just getting to the best part! I think they're really getting the hang of it! Last one got one good bounce in before he spit like a ripe tomato! <laughs> oh, I think the Moon Bishop's giving it a go! Don't want to miss that! Best yeah. hurry! Are you missed the show! Yes, Zenza, show us the way. Walker, you arrive at the perfect moment. You will witness our salvation. Moon Bishop Zenza said we must ascend with Kenarthi to escape the dragons. True cats will reach the sands behind the stars by stepping between the two moons. We have not found the path yet, but now our prophet will show us the way. Oh, have faith. Joan and Joan have shone like beacons for the moon bishop. She will lead us all to salvation, and you can join us, Walker. Yeah! It is 
so high. Saisenze should see where to step. Her vision showed it true, but she cannot see it now. No, this one sees by the light of the two moons. These are not fevered sugar dreams. She saw the dragon spring from the mouth of the world and swallow the moon. She saw her temple turn to ash. She must act before it is too late. Saisenza tried to save them. She sees so much that she is blinded. What is the truth? What are the lies? She can't tell what is real. Yes, I... I need to sit down. Gather my thoughts. Oh, no you don't. Get your paws off my favorite painting. Oh, look at you, running around like a chicken with its head cut off. Nothing beats a chicken without a noggin. Believe me, I've tried. You came awfully close to spoiling me fun, though. I like my fun. Why? So you can keep hogging all the toys? No, no, no. These are mine. I licked them. How much more marking do I have to do? Alone? Who wants to be alone? Trapped in their own head until all the life and joy of the world leaks out and leaves an ugly grey corpse. The better off in my company, sure. Suppose I could let them go. If you'd rather be my plaything instead. Then I whisk you home to where the real fun is. Oh, I haven't hosted company since half past. <laughs> ah, you'll love what I've done with the place. It'll be like you never left. Have you there in two shakes of a grand mal fit. So, what do you say? Come on, Plaything! The game's a fi- with your warning. Why won't you guide me when I need you now more than ever? I... I must see. Sacred sugar. There you go. Trying to play with my, my toys eyes. again. Oh, how the moons twinkle in those glassy eyes. You want to stare off into space and time? I'll show you the future past and present. 
you again. Toys that get in my way wind up back in the box. Is it time to pack you up? Cheese, cheese, cheese. Enjoy a few thousand wheels and suddenly it's all people get you when sun snod comes around. Do I look like a rat to you? Am I a rat? Meow. Nope, still a cat. Off with you then. I'm important catting to do. that get him chasing butterflies now plaything ah to be young again i must have spent my first three or four thousand years terrorizing those colorful little cooties alas i'm a grown man cat god with grown mad cat god tastes to get back to now get Wait your turn, plaything. There'll be plenty of time for me to chase you around this little maze after I've finished me snack. All these games work up an appetite. Oh, is that cream? Oh, I could go for some fatty bovine discharge right now. Why'd you go and bring it to me in a cup? Cats don't have thumbs. Well, most cats. Why don't I have thumbs? Hold on to that while I grow thumbs. <laughs> This way, take a bit. <laughs> oh, cream. Oh, I haven't had cream since I made Otar cry over it. No! Come back! Senza could almost see it. We burn our hair and lay scorched before the dragons. But what then? What then? But the dragons came. Sysenza saw it. They will burn her temple, burn us all, if she doesn't see the path. It feels familiar, like this one has done this before. Is this the future vision, or the vision future? She cannot tell anymore. Help this one, please. Show her. Show! Hey! I just messed that up! Can't leave a good mess unattended for one minute before some hero comes to clean it up! Go tidy your own drawers! Forward. John and Jod have shown me how we may protect our temple. Bless your eyes, Moon Bishop. What must we do? We must create an anchor beneath two moons to hold our temple between two moons. Apologies, Moon Bishop. This one does not see. They'll see clear enough once the anchor's built. <laughs> the anchor will let you all see as I do. All will become clear soon. Think you're the cream of the croup, eh? Well, you won't be filling my head with daydreams of sweet cow squeezings this time. I lapped up every last drop. 
Now what are you gonna do with all that dry toast, eh? <laughs> hey, careful with that! What poor fool could entertain their court if they lost their head? Between you and me, a, a wise fool keeps a few spares. You can borrow that one if it'll get you out of my fur. I'm not using it right now. You're the cream of the croup, eh? Well, you won't be... Cheese on toast? That's just crazy talk. Next, you'll be trying to make toast with the cheese already on it. Off with your cheese and toast madness. Good loony. Think you're the cream of the croup, eh? Yarn. So soft and bouncy. Just makes me want to bat it around like a newborn babe. No! You're trying to distract me again. Well, I'm not having it! No! Wait, yes! Keep dangling those luxurious ropey threads in my face and you'll find my claws in yours! Off with you! Saizenza has seen you at her temple, Faithful. She hopes you will help her with this anchor and save it from the dragons. Yes, to buoy her temple through this storm. Joan and Jode have shown it to me, and through it, their light will guide us all to salvation. It will hold open a tiny gap in the lunar lattice, so her temple might slip between the moon's shadows. Nestled between Joan and Jod, we will surely be safe from the dragons. We will tuck it away beneath our temple, to hold us firm through these troubled times. Come, I will show you, and we can begin- Ah! Quit your rattling! I was batting her thoughts into a glorious tango before you came along. Ah, now I'm gonna have to start again. for one day, plating. It was me the whole time! Are you surprised? <laughs> I was surprised. All oh, right, yeah, so I did. <laughs> but then I thought it'd be more fun to just keep you both. I was half right. You're a little too good as a plaything. It's not fair if you're always winning. That's the best part of playing games with lunatics! They're always changing the rules! You'd get it if you just let me whack you on the noggin a few hundred times. No? Well, game's over. Off with you now. Look at you! Making demands. In my games. In my realm! All right. One last impossible challenge for you, then. How's that for sporting? Say my name three times backwards. Oh! You took the words right out of me mouth! 
Next you'll be plucking me teeth for a new princely smile. Well, you can't have them. I need them to bite Haskell. Take a bite out of the anchor instead, would you? Farewell, cheese of my dreams. Now, out you go, before Haskell sees the mess you've made. Neither of us wants to hear that. Escape this nightmare! Quickly! Hadoras! What... What have I done? It was not you, Saizenza. It was the Skumakat that brought these misfortunes. Walker, this one remembers you from her dreams. Your face, your voice. Two moons guiding her through the fog. Saizenza cannot repay you enough for this. Saizenza is to blame. The Skuma Cat would have never caused this chaos if not for her weakness. She led her Clouder astray, and too many of her disciples had to pay the price. As Moon Bishop, it was Saizenza's duty to protect her temple. But when the time came, she could do nothing without Joan and Joad to show her the way. When the visions did not come, she tried to bring them with the sacred sugar. She is no leader. It is not for her to decide. If Khajiit lost their faith in her, she would not be surprised. This one will beg forgiveness for her failings and accept the will of her Clouder. She was too reliant on her gifts, and a leader must be more than a prophet. For the moment, it is all this one can do to try and restore peace and order to her temple. Then will come the true test. She knows the dragons will come to two moons, and her clouder must be prepared. Dragons. So many of them. Erupting from the mouth of the world, the skies becoming choked with flame and cinders raining down on our sands as one of the great creatures devours the moons. Much in my visions is symbolic, but this was so vivid. Moon sugar, refined into a potent liquid, skooma. It is a dangerous thing, abused by Sugartooth, who cannot resist its spell. But it is also a gift of the moons. There are ceremonies where the sacred sugar is used. I thought they could help me. Those who drink and smoke the sacred sugar experience things. During our ceremonies, these things are seen as a premonition or message from the Twin Moons. But it was the Skuma Cat that came to me instead. I should have been wise enough to see. He has always been the Skuma Cat. Since Fadomai gave him life and purpose, you may call him Sheogarath, and we Shegorath, but the truth is, he is both. He and his litter mates are cats whose coats are what they want us to see. This one only barely recalls things she saw in the haze, but the image of a man with two heads climbing the stars to hold the moons in darkness sticks with her. It is fit for the dreams of the Skuma Cat, but Saisenza fears there is some truth to it. 